What's up guys, I'm Puneet from Programmers and welcome back to this series on JavaScript. In this video, we will learn about the break and continue statements and use them with loops to change the normal flow of a loop. So let's get started. In programming, the break statement immediately terminates the loop when it is encountered. Before we move forward, let's see the working of a for loop first. Here, I'll use the for loop code to loop over and display the value of i in each iteration for five iterations. So I can say for let i equals one, i less than equals five, and i plus plus, and inside I'll just say console log i. Let me run this program. And as you can see, I got the numbers from one to five. Now, let me add a break statement inside the loop. I'll add it after the print statement. So I can say break. And now let me run this program again. This time, I only get one as output. Let's see what happened here. During the first iteration, the value of i is one, which is printed by this console log. Then the break statement is executed and it immediately terminates the loop. To see this clearly, let me add another print statement after the break. So here I'll say console.log after break. Now when I press run, I get the same output as before because the break statement terminates the loop immediately, anything after it is never executed. Generally, the break statement is used with conditional statements. That way we can break the loop only under certain conditions. Let's see an example. I'll use the same code. Here, I'll remove the break statement and the second print statement. So I'll remove these two. And before the console log, let me say something like if i equals three break. Let me run this code. And you can see that one and two are printed. For the first iteration, the value of i is one. Since one less than equals to five is true, I get inside the body of the for loop. Now, since one is not equal to true, we skip this if and one is printed by the console log that we can see here. In the next iteration, i is increased to two and since two less than or equals to five is true, I go inside the body of the for loop. Now, since two is not three, this break is not executed and the console log prints two. Now, in the next iteration, when i is three, 3 is 3 is true or 3 equals 3 is true and break is executed. That means no statements after this will be executed and we get outside the loop. And that's why 3 was never printed here. Let us see an example of a break statement with the while loop. I'll create a program that will ask input values from the user. If the user enters a positive number, I'll print the number and ask for another number. This process will continue until the user enters a negative number. When the user enters a negative number, I will just terminate the while loop. Since I want to terminate the loop with a break statement, let me start with a while loop that is always true. So let me remove this old code and I'll say while true. Here the condition of the loop is true, which means unless a break statement is encountered, the loop will keep running. Now inside this loop, I'll accept a number from the user. So let number equals parse float and then prompt. I think I screwed up the spelling of float. Yep. Prompt enter a number. And then I'll use an if statement to check if the number is less than zero. And inside the if statement, I'll execute the break statement. So here I can say if number less than zero then break. This means that the loop is terminated if the input value is negative. I'll then add a print statement to print the input value. So outside the if, I can say console.log number. Let me run this code. And I'll enter something like five. When I press enter, five is successfully printed. Let me try something like nine. And you can see that nine is also printed. Now let me enter a negative number like minus four. And you can see that the program ended because the loop is now terminated. Let's go into detail to see what's happening with the code. Here, I've created a while loop that is always true. Now in the first iteration, 
I entered 5. So number has the value 5. Since 5 less than 0 is false, this break is not executed and the number is printed. In the next iteration, I entered 9. So number is 9 and 9 less than 0 is again false. So the break statement is never executed and console log number prints 9. In the third iteration, however, I entered minus 4 and since minus 4 less than 0 is true, we encountered the break statement and the loop ended there and then. If you are enjoying this video, please also check out Program is Pro where we provide tutorials along with quizzes and challenges which will help you practice and test your learning in real time. Also the course includes projects to give you an awesome experience of how programming works in the real world. And for our YouTube subscribers, we are giving 50% off on the yearly plan. Sign up by scanning this QR code or use the link in the video description to claim your discount. Now let's move to the continue statement. Unlike break, the continue statement doesn't terminate the loop. It only skips the current iteration of the loop and starts the loop from the next iteration. Let's see an example. On my screen, you can see a previous code I used to demonstrate the break statement. If the value of i is 3, then we break out of the loop. Let me replace the break with a continue statement. So I'll say continue and then run the code. You can see that instead of breaking out of the code, only 3 is skipped from this loop. Let's try to understand what happened here and why 3 was not printed. During the first iteration, the value of the variable i was 1. Now i 1 less than 5 is okay and we go inside the body of the loop. And since 1 is not equals 3, we don't go to the continue statement. So console.log i printed 1. Similarly, in the second iteration, i is now 2. This is skipped and console.log i prints 2. Now things get interesting when i is 3. So when i is 3, 3 equals 3 is true and we encounter the continue statement. The continue statement does not allow anything else to execute inside the for loop and takes me directly to the update expression with, which increases the value of i to 4. So 4 and 5 get printed and when i becomes 6, we exit out of the loop. Okay guys, we need your support to keep these types of content free for all users. YouTube really likes engagement on the video. So leave a comment below, press that like button and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get the engagement score high up so that more people can discover and enjoy these courses. We now know the working of break and continue. Let's use them together in a single loop. I will create a program that asks an input value from the user. However, I want users to input only positive values. So when a user inputs a negative value or zero, I'll end the loop. Also, to make the program more interesting, I will only print the number if it's even. So if the user inputs an odd number, I will use the continue statement so that odd values are not printed. Let's get started. So I hope you remember this code from our earlier program. Here the break statement is already executed and it breaks the loop or ends the loop if the input value is negative. Since I only want to print even numbers, I'll need to use the continue statement if the number is odd. So let me add an if statement here. I'll say if number modulo 2 not equals 0, continue. Here the modulo operator returns the remainder when number is divided by 2. If this remainder is equals 0, then it's an even number. So since I want to find odd numbers, I'll say not equals to 0. This condition then tells me if the number is odd or not. If the number is odd, then I just want to continue. I don't want to print the number at all. Let's run this code. I'll enter something like 4. And when I press enter, you can see that 4 got printed. Now let me enter an odd number like 9 and you can see that nothing got printed that means my continue is working. Now let me again enter an even number like 28 and it's getting printed fine. Now let's break out of the loop by doing a negative number like minus 34 and when I press enter you can see that I broke out of the loop. Here you can see when the input value is odd the condition number modulo 2 not equals 0 Make sure that this console log is not executed, but I still keep on going with the loop because the continue statement does not break me out of the loop, but just helps me go to the next iteration while skipping the rest of the loop. Similarly, when the input value is negative, the condition number less than zero breaks out of the loop. However, when the input is a positive even number, 
both of these conditions number less than 0 and number modulo 2 not equals to 0 are false the flow of the program goes to console log number and that's why 4 and 28 were printed on the screen now to practice what we have learned here's a programming task for you can you create a program that takes the input from the user if the user enters a single digit number print the number if the user enters a negative or double digit number ask the user for another number and if the user enters a number greater than 100 terminate the loop you'll find the answer to this question in our github repository also if you want to revise these concepts you can find all these programs in our github repository i'll put the link in the video description below now that we have reached the end of this video it's time for the programming quiz which of the following keywords is used to terminate a loop terminate break continue loop comment your answer below happy programming